I want to just mention a little bit more about file management. When I was demonstrating the different user interfaces, I demonstrated using um, directories, looking at directories and subfolders using the command line, and then also showed the file explorer. So I just want to talk a little bit more about that. It is the operating system's role, to one of its roles, to keep track of the files that are on your computer. The files are organized into folders, sort of like a hierarchy. Um, the folders could represent specific tasks, or they can represent types of uh, documents that you may have or programs you may have. It's totally up to you to organize it in however you like, however you would like, except for the folders that come with specific like programs you might install or the operating system folders. Those are already pre-built for you. But you have a lot of control over things that you add to your computer. Um, there is access in like File Explorer here. You can access the individual drives like I demonstrated in the command line where I could go from the hard drive to my external drive. There are libraries which are sort of like folders folders and then folders within folders or subfolders and then you get down to the individual little files. The root directory is the root is the first of the folders. So for example here on my computer, I'm out here at my videos, if I look at my C drive, well C would be the root folder. That's the bottom level. C is the hard drive. And so then I have all these folders. Windows is already built in there. It, uh, most of these come with that, the operating system. Um, so a file can contain data or it can contain instructions or a program. Each file is treated as a separate thing. You can move the file. You it, now physically you can move it from, well, it's not physically moving it. It's rearranging where it is stored in like a list. The operating system keeps a list of all the files that are on your computer and where they're located, actually by address as to where that file starts. Um, keeps track of how big it is, what kind of program it is, whether it's a, a document that was created in Word or a PDF file or a movie or a picture or whatever it is. Um, all of these files that you have on your computer are stored on your permanent storage, so on the hard disk or on a, like an external drive, like a thumb drive or something like that. Anything that's stored in RAM does not have a file name as such. I mean, you may have opened something and it's open temporarily in your RAM, but it is only there until you turn your computer off and then it's gone. So we're concerned mostly about the files that are permanently stored on a device. File Explorer, that's this. That allows you an interface and I demonstrated that a little bit before. I'll come back to it in a minute. So yes, and I demonstrated how you can view it different ways, either as a list or with icons and the preview pane. We've already done that. Um, when you store a file, it is given an extension. Let me go in here. Um, let's say here. And you'll notice that in my file explorer here, it only lists the name. It doesn't list the extension, but it tells me under the type here what kind of document it is. If I want to see more information, I can right click on that and choose, oh, you can't see it. Well, go down to the bottom and choose properties and that gives me more information. So notice here it tells me what kind of a, what the extension is and that's the, the name of the file after, well, so this is the name of my file and the extension is .doc and the operating system knows because of the software that's been installed and because of the drivers and the the API, the user interface or the, the interface between the operating system and the software that a .doc file is a Microsoft Word file and that's an old version of Microsoft Word. Notice 1997, 19, well oh, no, Word 97 from 2003. Mm -hmm. You also get inf other information as how big the file is, when it was created, when it was modified, when it was last accessed. Um, you can choose to set things to read only so people can't copy or edit them. 
and then there are other tabs and we won't go into detail about this but there's a lot of information here including that extension you notice if I right click oops, on my PDF file and go to properties here I have a PDF document okay so there are some extensions that are very common the doc is usually come some kind of um, Microsoft Word XLS is Microsoft Excel ACC is Microsoft Access PPT PowerPoint PDFs RTFs rich text format text and so on so the, the extensions give the operating system information about what program should be used to open them most files that you have on your computer you can open them or copy cut rename them delete them put them in the recycle bin for later deletion some f files you're not going to be able to do that to and those are usually files that are critical to the operating system you may not be able to delete some files um, and that is a protection so that you don't accidentally delete something that is critical to the operating of your computer the operation of your computer so you would end up with a machine that can't be used but this is not in any operating system whether it's um, Mac operating system or Linux or Windows you'd be able to do all of these things there's also the ability to compress files this is just to save space to make files take up less space on your hard disk and to do that in Windows you can you have two choices like if I wanted to choose this assignment I can ch click on the share tab and choose zip and that will compress it it just takes out any of the extra information or extra space that might be in your file when you unzip it later that will put everything back in that you need you can also just right click and choose send to compressed file and that does the exact same thing as clicking on zip up here okay so file compression is very important if you're dealing with large files or if you have limited space on your hard drive uh, or if you're sending a file as an attachment to an email and it's a very large file it may be that before you send it you might want to compress it so it takes up less space and you don't run into any file limitations in sending emails so that's just a little bit of an overview of file management hugely important if you did not have an operating system that was managing your files and keeping track of all the different files and what programs they use and where they're located you wouldn't be able to use any of it